On the top floors of this building are the headquarters of Whiting Petroleum Corporation in Denver, Colorado. Whiting is producing oil from the Bakken Three Forks Resource Play, a prolific oil bearing system that was instrumental in pushing total U.S. production ahead of both Saudi Arabia and Russia. Whiting is the largest Bakken Three Forks producer. Its focus area is 10,000 feet beneath the rich farmland of North Dakota in the Williston Basin, ground zero of the shale boom. Because of where we are in the development of the Bakken within the Williston Basin right now, one of the, the questions that we as an industry are asking is what can we expect in terms of the total resource potential in this basin? Up to this point, we've been drilling wells to hold our acreage. We've started doing development drilling in, in certain areas, but uh, now we're starting to ask how many wells can we actually uh, economically put in and expect to recover uh, uh, economically viable quantities of oil and gas. And that question is fundamentally dependent on how much oil is in place and how it's distributed both vertically through the section and laterally across the basin. Without understanding that, you really don't you can't answer that question of how you best go about developing it. So it's something that our geoscience and engineering team here at Whiting has been very focused on for the last several months. And, uh, and that's where we are right now. This core that we've got laid out here in our, our core lab is one that was taken explicitly to sort of answer that question about uh, how hydrocarbons are distributed from the very top of the pay column to the very base of it. To look for oil in one of the world's most prolific, unconventional petroleum systems, Whiting has assembled a team of wildcatters. But these wildcatters aren't high-flying risk-takers. They are experienced geoscientists, geologists, and engineers who rely on cutting-edge technology to understand how to get oil molecules to move through solid rock. Whiting's wildcatters work at the company's Denver headquarters, surrounded by high-tech equipment and a few tons of rock, core samples brought up from 10,000 feet below the surface of North Dakota. In this lab, the Whiting geoscientists use ultra-precise imaging equipment that was designed for the medical and semiconductor industries. But at Whiting, these machines have found a new home at the heart of North America's shale revolution. Right now, the Whiting Geoscience team is working on a project of immense scale. They're analyzing the entire Williston Basin Petroleum System. To put it another way, they're inspecting an area the size of Texas, one rock at a time, literally at a scale that's the width of a human hair. Who would take on such a project? Hi, I'm Lynn Cantor. My name is Cliff Boogie, and I'm a senior dual beam engineer. Uh, Mark R. Williams. I'm the Senior Vice President of Exploration and Development here at Whiting Petroleum. I'm a geologist by training. Um, I've spent 30 years of my career in reservoir characterization of conventional reservoirs. That helps in terms of unconventional reservoir characterization, but you have to look at things in a slightly different way using different tools. Personally, myself, I've got a, a geology degree. Um, but I started out in high tech working in the semiconductor industry um, back in the 90s and did that for almost 10 years um, before I moved over to uh, doing applications for uh, one of the microscope companies. So it literally was luck and timing. And um, when I worked for the microscope company, I um, trained people on how to run these microscopes. That's how I got my foot in the door here at Whiting. The new thing for us is to be able to characterize these rocks at the micro and nano scale because with conventional techniques like petrography or even some wireline evaluations you miss a lot of the character of the pay intervals. So taking conventional petrographic techniques to the SEM world I think has been one of the more exciting things for me. Shortly after we started developing our wells we uh, had an awful lot of questions. Uh, it was obvious that these reservoirs were quite a bit different than the conventional reservoirs that we were all used to. Uh, and a lot of the questions arose around what was really happening at the scale of the oil molecule. We knew that one of the fundamental differences was is that the pore space in these reservoirs uh, was much, much smaller than it was in conventional reservoirs. In fact, it was getting so small that it was, we knew it was in the same size range as the oil molecules that we were asking to pass through this. Uh, this network of pores. But we had no way of imaging it and uh, it was proved to be really frustrating for us. 
uh, we decided to take a deep dive into to, uh, the current uh, state of scanning electron microscope technology. That led us out to Beaverton, Oregon, and to a company called FEI, and that's really where the light went on for us. We had the opportunity out there to really see uh, technology that would allow us to see right down at that, that scale and start to answer uh, those questions about the relationship of, relationship of pores uh, to oil molecules. The main reason we have this equipment um, in our lab is this SEM is equipped with a system called QuemScan, um, also a product of FEI laboratories out of Hillsboro, Oregon, that allows us to do automated point counting or automated mineralogy. So what that entails is taking a sample like a one inch plug because that's our standard. If we can get our data scaled up to this one inch plug, that's where most of the other measurements that we use in characterizing reservoirs um, are taken from. Well, um, sticking with the theme of uh, scale, um, I, I use the same one inch plug that's used on the, the Quana, um, the SEM that you had looked at earlier. This particular system is a dual beam or a FibSEM. Um, it has uh, an SEM as well as a gallium ion beam. Um, which allows it to sputter and mill material. So it's basically a micro milling machine. We collect a backscatter electron image of the same sample. And you can just think of backscatter as being important because it gives us information about material density. So if a material has no density, such as a pore, because that's an open void, we'll see that as black areas within a sample. Sorts of questions that we're asking there are sort of what we discussed before, and that's the relationship between the pore geometries inside of those reservoirs and the ability of fluid to flow through there. And we can see that very discreetly. We can quantify it, both in terms of the images that we, we take, and we can see those reservoirs, we slice our rocks up in three dimensions, sort of think of it as a block of Swiss cheese, and those holes are the part that we're really interested in. So we can take multiple slices of that Swiss cheese put them all back together in the computer and characterize the, the, the whole reservoir in there. That's really the type of thing that we're trying to get at. The human hair is going to be approximately 100 uh, microns wide, 50 wow. to 100 microns wide. And so this is about the human hair right here. Okay. And so I, we can zoom up right up, you know, very close to the pore space that's on that process. If I know the width of, of the face, if I know the resolution of the image, and if I know the slice, the thickness of the slice, I can go in and take a single, a single slice, image, image number one, slice number two, image number two, so on and so forth, and collect a stack of images. I can then take those images offline and reconstruct those into a 3D working model. It leads to what uh, we around here started calling the holy grail. And so just to give you an example, uh, one of the real benefits of this lab is the turnaround time. And uh, we drilled a well recently uh, on our Dunn County properties in an area that was a bit of an exploration step out for us on the edge of the play. And um, in, uh, in this well, there are both Bakken and Three Forks objectives. And uh, we were looking at both of those as potential candidates. And we decided because of where it was and because we'd seen sort of mixed results in, in the Bakken in this particular area, we decided to take a vertical core and, and see if it would help us uh, define our target a little bit better. So we did that. Uh, we took a vertical core and we drilled the well in what we call a stiletto heel fashion. That basically means taking a vertical core and then uh, we back up. Uh, we set a cement plug and kick the well off and then go horizontal. And by the time we get ready to land the horizontal well, we have meanwhile taken that vertical core, hot shotted it back to Denver, gotten it slabbed through the analysis here in our lab. This all takes a matter of days. This, this can be done in four or five days. And then we get the initial results back and it tells us just exactly what zone to land that well in. In this case, we changed our objective from the Bakken down to the Three Forks because we, fought, we found a lot better reservoir uh, uh, potential in the Three Forks. We landed it there and really ended up making uh, a pretty good discovery and extended that part of the play and uh, that really that part of the basin. Uh, uh, and had we not had this lab and the turnaround time that we have become uh, accustomed to here, we would probably have defaulted to the Bakken in that well and we'd have missed that Three Forks opportunity entirely. So that's one of the real benefits of the lab is that turnaround time.